Hi, this is Usha. Welcome to Rathod's IS classes. Today in this lecture, we are going to see current affairs of 27th March 2022. So let's get started with our discussion and let us see the first topic. So first topic, we are going to discuss about one important scheme that is Pradhan Mantri. Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan Anna Yojana. Okay, Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan Anna Yojana. So this topic is very important. And every year you can get at least two questions from your schemes, from schemes in your prelims. To answer those questions, so you need to be thorough with the schemes that appear in the news in that year. Right. So title says free ration scheme extended by six months. So actually, if you see this infographic, then you can understand about what is the background of this scheme. So actually, now what happened? Government of India, which mainly extended this scheme. Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan Anna Yojana. So this program which is mainly focusing to provide 5 cages of food grain. 5 cages of food grain free of cost. Okay, 5 cages of food grains free of cost to poor by 6 months. That will be extended till September 30 now. Right. So this is in addition to the normal quota of highly subsidized grains. So already in every state, okay, in every state we will be having public distribution system. So under this PDA system, so there will be subsidized food grains will be given, right. So along with that, okay, so this is addition to that PDA system. So 5 cages of food grain that will be given free of cost. And if you are talking about some important details regarding this scheme, so it is about 759 lakh tons of free food grains distributed. And the cost here is around rupees 2.6 lakh crore. And now with the extension of this scheme for next six months, so there will be about 244 lakh tons of this free food grains allotted for next six months. And the scheme was which mainly announced in year 2020 in March. Okay, so because of this surge of COVID-19 cases in the country, and because of imposition of abrupt national wide lockdown, so this scheme was announced, right? And this will be the sixth phase of Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan Anna Yojana, right? So now let us try to see in detail regarding this scheme. So, as I said, what is the context? Context here is for next six months, so till September. 2022 the extension of this scheme it is mainly seen and if you see some details it mainly says that the scheme was originally introduced in april 2020 during the first lockdown in the country and now this is sixth phase and now let us try to see some important facts regarding this pradhan mantri garib kalyan package or garib kalyan anna yojana so actually, so this Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan Anna Yojana, which is a part of Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan package. And this is mainly focusing to help poor to fight against the battle of COVID-19. And which is a ministry, which is a nodal ministry. Nodal ministry is Ministry of Finance. And initially, it's mainly introduced for three months. And later on, we came with extension. And now this is a sixth phase. And this scheme, which is aiming to provide each person who is covered under this National Food Security Act 2013 and they will be given additional 5 cages of food grains, okay, either wheat or rice for free. So now let us try to see next topic, it is regarding corner shot weapon, okay. So if you see this weapon, this is the corner shot weapon system. So actually this is a system which is mainly developed by DRDO. So this is very important. And this is important from defense and even science and technology, which mainly comes in your GS paper 3. And if you are preparing for any state service examinations, so you can get, especially you are, if you are preparing for any defense related examinations, you need to be updated with the developments in the defense arms. So if you see context, it mainly says that the corner shot weapon system, that is CSWS, so this system which is mainly designed and developed by DRDO, Defense Research and Development Organization. And this, this corner shot weapon system which is an advanced stage of being inducted by 
CRPF. Now CRPF that is Central Reserve Police Force. They are going to induct this corner shot weapon system and even with this uh, Jammu and Kashmir police as well. So if you're talking about some important details, it mainly says that so this weapon system, it is a special purpose weapon system and this system which mainly designed by Armament Research and Development Establishment Pune. So what are the some specifications of this system? So it can engage targets which are located around the corners as system bends and captures video feed thus saving soldiers from any surprise counter attack and is best suited for urban and even closer quarter situations. So actually, so the one important specification or speciality of this system here is, so this, this system can bend and it can capture a video as well. So in this way, this will be helpful for saving the life of the soldiers, especially from surprise counter attack as well. And in this way, it is very much best suited in urban areas and even in critical situations. And this development was completed in March 2019 as well, okay. And since it mainly cleared uh, user trials and even various uh, central armored police forces and now it is going to be inducted soon. Actually, this system which is also used in Indian Japanese bilateral army exercise and the name of that exercise is Dharma Guardian. So recently this Dharma Guardian which mainly held so in this Dharma Guardian exercise as well. So this is mainly used and this system which mainly equipped with weapon, camera, laser. Ah, yeah, that is infrared illuminators and even it will be having a torch in front portion as well. So it will be having some specifications like display, electronics, battery, surveilling mechanism as well. And one important advantage of this system here is, so the body of the system which is mainly made up of aluminium. So aluminium which is light in weight, so it is easily to, it is very much easy to carry as well. And it is having some special features like day night firing capability color display digital zoom zeroing facility hot keys high power battery so these are some special features of this system and this system which is mainly indigenously developed and it has many superior features which mainly compared to contemporary international systems so compared to this international system so it is mainly having some superior features and if you're talking about what will be the significance so first of all this system which is mainly developed and designed by drdo so this will be very much helpful for atmanirbhar becoming self-reliant in this defense as well right so now let's try to see next topic so i found this image and this image which is very much relevant from our art and culture so this image which is mainly talking about this kambala so now let us try to talk about this kambala so kambala it is a traditional buffalo race so where we can see these buffalo rays, especially in the paddy fields. So these paddy fields are mainly filled with water and as well as slush and mud. And in this paddy fields, so there will be the buffalo rays. And it is mostly seen in the coastal Karnataka area in UDP and as well as Dakshin Kannada. And normally between the months of November to March, we can see this Kambala race, buffalo race. And actually this race, which is mainly sponsored by local Tuluwa landlords, and households in the coastal districts. So in the coastal districts, we can see this local Tuluva landlords. They mainly sponsoring this event. And the people, they are mainly belonging to the ethnic group. And these people, they are mainly native for this southern India. And naturally, we can see the native speakers of Tulu language. So normally, these people mainly speak this Tulu language. So during the race, the racers try to bring the buffaloes under control by holding their reins tight and whipping them. So if you see this image, you can see the person who mainly holding this uh, buffalo ripe, okay, reins and they will be also whipping them tightly. And if you're talking about this tradition, actually this Kambala was non-competitive and buffalo pates raised one after another in the paddy fields, okay. And this race which is mainly which is mainly uh, this race or this event which is mainly related to the protecting of uh, gods will be protect them and even their animals and even diseases they will be protecting uh, their animals from the diseases so if we're talking about cause of concern regarding the skambala so animal activists they criticize that this sport uh, it is mainly involves act of violence or cruelty uh, cruelty on animals 
okay it is not whenever the animals which are not suited for the racing and they will be running in the race due to fear of being beaten so because of them according to this prevention of cruelty act of 1960 so this act which mainly prevents the practice which is mainly involving the pain to animal and which is also amounting to violence and as well as cruelty so this is about this topic and now let us try to see next topic it is regarding endosulfon actually this endosulfon it is one of the i can say it is uh, like an organic uh, material so this mainly used it for spraying it is it will be like a pesticide which is mainly used for spraying on different crops especially in this castle goat area of kerala which is very much famous for this uh, cashew nuts so at that time what happened in this cashew nut areas they went for spraying of this endosulfon by using helicopters so because of that that led to a negative impact on environment and even humans as well so humans they are mainly facing some some related issues of this endosulfon so because of this now kerala government which mainly decided to disperse the compensation for this people who are mainly affected by this endosulfon with rupees 5 lakh okay so this is about this topic and this is important from your environment and ecology so if you see context that mainly says that kerala government kerala government which mainly decided to disperse compensation of rupees 5 lakh okay rupees 5 lakh to about 3714 endosulfon victims in kasar god after verifying their eligibility okay kerala government has decided to disburse a compensation the compensation here is about rupees 5 lakh each to 3114 endosulfon victims so we're talking about this endosulfon it is organochlorin insecticide so it is a pest or insecticide it is mainly made up of organochlorins actually this endosulfon was first time introduced in 1950s in 1950s for the first time so this endosulfon which mainly introduced and the trade name of this endosulfon was theodon so if we're talking about use of this endosulfon it is insecticide it is mainly sprayed on copper uh, crops like cotton cashew fruits tea paddy tobacco and it mainly used for controlling of flies that is especially white flies, aphids, beetles, worms, etc. So this is use of this endosulfan. So if we're talking about what is the impact? So if we're talking about impact, we can talk about impact on environment and impact on human and animals. So if we're talking about impact on environment, endosulfan in the environment, which mainly gets accumulated in the food chain. Okay, food chain means, for example, if there are any plants, so plants will be consumed by herbivores herbivores will be consumed by carnivores carnivores will be consumed by top predators right so in this food chain whenever any uh, if, if there is a endosulfon which is present in the plant that will be transferred to this animals okay so in this way so in this entire food chain there will be the there will be the accumulation that is mainly seen and in this way so that will be having some negative impacts on the health of that food chain and if at all this endosulfon which is released into water means so it is mainly expected to absorb the sediments absorb to the sediments and it may also bioconcentrate in our aquatic organisms so not only the food chain and even in the aquatic organisms also it will be going for accumulation and if you're talking about impact on humans and animals endosulfon ingestion which may result in diseases so it mainly includes even physical deformities cancer birth disorders damage to brain and nervous system so there will be the negative impact that is seen on the both health of humans and even animals so if we're talking about banning of this endosulfon so actually top court of india that is supreme court of india which mainly banned manufacture sale use and export of this endosulfon throughout the country because of some health impacts that we already faced and this endosulfon which is mainly listed under this Rotterdam convention on prior informed consent and even under the Stockholm convention on POPs that is persistent organic pollutants so you have to remember about this conventions for sure that will be very important from your prelims point of view so if you are talking about Rotterdam convention of 1980-1998 so this convention which is mainly aims to promote cooperation and responsibility of sharing measure among the different countries which are mainly dealing with the trade in hazardous chemicals and pesticides okay so this convention which mainly aims to promote cooperation 
and responsibility sharing measures among the different countries which are mainly dealing with trade in hazardous chemicals and pesticides and if you are talking about this convention that is we need prior informed consent so prior informed consent is one of the important main feature of this convention and this convention is also legally binding on the members so whenever we have this prior informed consent so this will be very much helpful in transfer of information or information exchange regarding nature and trade related information among the party members and this convention which mainly creates obligations for implementation of prior informed consent procedure so for this prior informed consent, consent procedure also it is very much important and next one is stock home convention of 2001 so it is mainly talking about persistent organic pollutants that is pops so convention which mainly aims to reduce the concentration of this persistent organic pollutants and these persistent organic pollutants they are chemical substances that not only remain in the atmosphere for the longer periods but also they have the ability to bioaccumulate as well and this stockholm convention which is mainly listing about 12 persistent organic pollutants and they are called as dirty dozen okay so this is very important and now let us try to see next topic it is regarding this one horned rhinoceros okay one horned rhinoceros and it is mainly talking about rhino census rhino census in this kaziranga national park in assam so now if you are talking about rhinos okay we are having normally five species of rhinos so we have white rhinos black rhinos in africa and we will be having great one horned rhinoceros german and sumatran rhinoceros species that we can see in asia so you have to remember white and black rhino that we can see in africa and we can see greater one horned rhinoceros in india and even we can see this german and sumatran rhinoceros and these species are seen in asia so if you're talking about iucn status of these five species of this rhino so this black rhino which is critically endangered and white rhinoceros it is near threatened one horned rhinoceros it is vulnerable and german rhinoceros it is critically endangered and sumatran rhino it is critically endangered you have to remember this for sure and if you are talking about great one horned rhinoceros it is found only in india okay and it is one of the largest rhino species as well okay and it is mainly having just a single black horn right and if you are talking about habitat it is mainly seen in small habitat of indo nepal terai and northern bengal and assam regions in india rhinos are mainly found in assam west bengal and as well as up so especially assam it is a home for this one horned rhinoceros so they are mainly seen in some protected areas for example we have kaziranga national park we have manas national park we have rajiv gandhi orang national park and Pabitora National Park. So these are the four protected areas of this rhino. Right, and if you're talking about threats for this rhino, so they are having threats from poaching for their horns, especially uh, for the horns of this uh, one horned rhinoceros, they will be having much value in the international market and especially in the China. Okay, they will believe that they will be having medicinal value. And next one is because of habitat loss. Whenever we are going for developmental projects or infrastructure projects, there will be destruction of their habitat, which is mainly seen. And next one is population density. So whenever there is increasing of population, they will be spreading their settlements, right? So because of this, that will lead to this habitat loss. And there is also one important threat from this decreasing of genetic diversity. So these are some threats. And if you're talking about conservation efforts, so actually five rhino range nations like India, Bhutan, Nepal, Indonesia, and Malaysia, they mainly came up with a declaration. So this declaration is commonly called as the New Delhi Declaration. Okay, New Delhi Declaration on Asian Rhinos 2019. And they mainly focus on conservation and the protection of the species. Okay, so they mainly focusing on conservation and as well as protection of the species. And if you're talking about ministry, recently Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change, which mainly began the project to create DNA profiles of all rhinos in the country. They are mainly coming up with creating of DNA profiles. And in India, we also have National Rhino Conservation Strategy. Actually, this strategy which is mainly launched in 2019 and which is mainly focusing to conserve great one horned rhinoceros. And we are also having this Indian Rhino Vision 2020 
and under this India Indian Rhino Vision 2020, which mainly launched in 2005, and this was an ambitious effort made to attain wild population at least 3,000 greater 1 horned rhinos, which mainly spread over seven protected areas in Indian state of Assam by the year 2020. Okay, so this is about this topic. And now let us try to see next topic. It is regarding fewer olive ridley reach Godavari site. So this article which is mainly talking about olive ridley turtles. So this topic it is important from your environment and ecology which mainly comes under your GS paper 3. So now let us try to see context. So what happened? So across this Godavari coast, especially this Godavari estuary, so it is one of the important place for the nesting sites of this olive ridley. But what happened, there is less number of this olive redly turtles which mainly arrived to this Godavari history. So this is one important thing. And actually what happened during this breeding season of this olive redly, the large number of this animals, they mainly come to this side. But now what happened because of this uh, speed, speed fishing boats, because of this high speed fishing boats that are mainly become one of the major threats for this olive redly turtles. So, if we are talking about some details, it mainly says that the entire rookery including the Skoringa Wildlife Sanctuary, which is part of rare and ecologically sensitive Godavari mango system. So, according to official data, about 1061 turtles, they arrived at this Godavari estuary in 2018-19 breeding season. Okay, now what happened? The number of this turtle have becoming lesser or falling down. So in 2019-20, there were about 640 turtles, they arrived as Cherry. And now in this 2020-2021, it is like 471 turtles. So this is one of cause of concern. So there is decreasing the number of turtles which are mainly arriving this Godavari estuary. So if we are talking about reasons, what are the reasons? First important one here is because of this mechanized boat. So this mechanized boat, they will be having a very high speed engine beyond its permissible capacity. So because of this, it will lead to the death traps for olive red turtles on Andhra coast in the recent years. And if you're talking about what are the measures? So if you're talking about measures which are already taken, so they are going for installation of the CCTV cameras such that they will be helpful for monitoring of fishing and even that will ensure for this turtle conservation activity as well. And in this five rookeries, we are going for in situ and as well as ex situ conservation methods. And there are about dedicated 25 fisher fluke. They are mainly collecting these turtle eggs and they are ensuring these hatchlings they are released into the sea. So in this way, the survival rate which mainly increases to 90 percentage. So here we need to go for banning of this mechanized shipping boats at least during this breeding season of this olive redly turtles. So this will be helpful for safe arrival of turtles at the breeding spots. So this is very, very important. And now let us try to see next topic. It is also regarding to this olive ready turtles. So Gahir Mata Beach witnesses an Aribada. So here you need to know about what is this Aribada. So this will be important from your environment and ecology, which mainly comes under your GS paper 3. So if you're talking about context, it mainly says that about 2.45 lakh olive ready turtles they crawled ashore on this Nasi 2 beach of Gahir Mata Marine Sanctuary. So to this Gahir Mata Marine Sanctuary, so about 2.45 lakh olive redly sea turtles, they mainly came to the coast here. And they are mainly coming for the laying of eggs in this area. And this will be marking as the largest opening day arrivals of turtles, okay, at the sea. So we're talking about some important details. It mainly says that authorities of state forest and environment department they have apprehensive about the delay in annual nestling ritual so actually what happened there is a delay of this ritual that is mainly seen at this gahir mata so actually this gahir mata it is one of the largest rookery for this endangered olive redly turtles right so one more cause of concern regarding this gahir mata here is so this nasi one and as well as nasi two beaches they were under jurisdiction of this Defense Research and De uh, Development Organization that is simply DRDO. So it is very much near to this Wheeler Island. So this Wheeler Island, so where we can go for conducting of our missile test. So this is also one cause of concern during this period. And because of this missile test, we can say there is degree or arrival of this olive redly had become late. And if you're talking about some facts regarding this Gahirmata Marita Marine Sanctuary, 
so actually it is one of the mass nestling spot in indian ocean region and it is one of the uh, turtle sanctuary in odisha and it is also the one of the world's largest nesting beach of only redly sea turtles as well and actually this gahir mata which was declared as turtle sanctuary in 1997 by odisha government and they will also consider it as one of the ecologically important and there are many efforts which are mainly taken to save the sea turtles and is gahir mata marine sanctuary it is one of the three parts of this bitar kanika national park and actually this mainly includes the areas of bitar kanika national park and as well as bitar kanika wildlife sanctuary so if you see the map here we have this gahir mata marine sanctuary and this is our indian ocean right so here you can see the different uh, rivers like river devi here river mahanadi river jambu and here uh, you can see this maipura river dar dam damra river so these are some small, small 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 rivers which are mainly present here right so now let's try to talk about what is aribada so aribada it is a one of the important term which is mainly used to describe mass migration of sea turtles so in the large numbers these sea turtles they will be migrated and the large group of females they will be assembled and they will be going for the nesting they will lay the eggs on the side of the beach and now let's try to see next topic it is regarding smoking smoking causes over 7 million deaths a year so this topic is important from your health which mainly comes in your gs paper 2 and whatever the data that we are going to see now so please try to make a note of that data that can be used when you are writing answer regarding this tobacco and as well as smoking related deaths so if you are talking about the context it mainly says that as per the estimates of this world health organization and fda food and drug association of this usa it mainly says that about 1.3 billion people out of this about 7.9 billion okay 7.9 billion across the world who smoke and out of this 7.9 billion among the world it this 1.3 billion from usa and 7.9 billion from entire world so out of this those people who are smoking about 80 percentage of people they will live in low and middle income countries as you all know smoking is thus an epidemic and it is one of the great public health threat and it is mainly causing harmful or it is mainly killing or deaths which are related to the smoking it is around 8 million people around a year so if you are talking about data it mainly says that over 7 million of these people they mainly died due to direct tobacco use due to direct tobacco use about 7 million people they mainly die and about 1.2 million non smokers they are mainly exposed to second hand smoke second hand smoke means for example uh, if you see in public places like uh, parks or bus stops railway stations etc so one person who is mainly smoking right so the people who are sitting beside him or standing beside him they will be also inhaling the air which is present there so in that air we can see the smoke of the cigarette is there so in this way if you are if you are taking that air means you will be also indirectly inhaling that chemical components of that cigarette right so it mainly comes under this secondary smoking or second hand smoking and according to this american journal of preventive medicine traditional cigarette smokers there are about 30 to 40 percentage more likely than non smokers okay and they are mainly going to develop this type 2 diabetes mellitus if you are talking about diabetes we will be having type 1 type 2 and as well as gestational diabetes mellitus so in this type 2 diabetes mellitus it is mainly because of uh, resistance resistance to this insulin so resistance to this insulin means insulin will be insulin will be pro, uh, will be produced in the body but it is it is mainly resistant to the cells so because of this we can develop this type 2 diabetes mellitus so according to this american journal of this preventive medicine it mainly says that there is link between smoking and as well as type 2 diabetes mellitus and one more study which mainly says that smoking causes uh, over 7 million deaths every year about 5.6 million young americans they mainly die because of uh, smoking and because of this secondary smoking or second hand smoking it mainly causes 1.2 million deaths worldwide and smoking it is one of the world's leading cause of impoverishment and in 2015 7 out of 10 smokers they reported that they want to quit completely right and one more study which is mainly done by this nature medicine which mainly says that so who which mainly adopted a framework convention on tobacco control in 
and it also introduced this global developmental target that is uh, like 2030 agenda for sustainable development also and this convention is also signatory by 155 countries and these countries which are mainly banning smoke smoking and even health warnings are providing health warnings and advertising bans and raise the cigarette cost by imposing tax like that so if we talk about indian scenario india which mainly graduated that is mainly moved from this low developed country or low income country towards developed developed or developing countries and in india we can estimate like 120 million smokers are present and if you're talking about in india especially smoking had become a tradition because in earlier days the material called as cannabis which was very much prevalent in india and even neighboring countries because we are sandwiched between this golden crescent and as well as golden triangle so this cannabis it is one of the plant product and which is mainly known by some local names like charas hashish ganja bang etc so users mainly they feel like uh, very much high after consuming this or after smoking this chair this cannabis so if we're talking about active principles in this cannabis it is a psychoactive molecule so that is called as tetrahydrocannabinol so which is mainly responsible for this psychoactive and as well as intoxicating effects so if we're talking about introduction or entry of this tobacco into india so who introduced this tobacco that is portuguese credit goes to portuguese okay portuguese they introduced this tobacco cultivation in northern western uh, districts of gujarat and later on it mainly spread to other states like up bihar and bengal so actually what happened in 1903 britishers they came up with this imperial agriculture research institute and it mainly began research on this botanical and as well as genetic studies of this tobacco so because of that what happened now we can see there is cultivation of uh, this tobacco in india and let me know which uh, which state in india which is the largest producer of tobacco right and now if you're talking about ban on this tobacco products in india we are having uh, like uh, 12 crore people who smoke here so what happened this uh, because of this large number of people who are mainly spoken and they will be uh, smoking they will be having some negative impacts right so because of this here we need to take some steps especially to decrease to decrease this use of this tobacco so in this context indian ministry of health which mainly said to prohibit the sale of the cigarettes right and it also came up with prohibiting of smoking in the public places like healthcare, education institutions government facilities public transports because secondary smoking is also having some negative impact and next topic is regarding t cell immune responses seen a year after infection so what happened so these are the t cells that is uh, we are having t cells so actually these t cells are very much helpful for releasing of this neutralizing antibodies so researchers they mainly found that neutralizing antibodies they were detectable even 12 months after infection in most of the individuals so if we're talking about details it mainly says that researchers mainly found that multifunctional t-cell responses they were detected for all sars coronavirus to viral proteins right okay and importantly this uh, this t-cell responses did not show any differences so even though if you are uh, suffering from severe disease or like a less severe disease yes you are having a mag same magnitude of this t-cell responses so if we're talking about some facts regarding these t-cells they are also big uh, they, are, they are very very important and they are mainly produced from this thymus okay from thymus we can produce this t-cells and what is the responsibility of these t-cells so whenever any foreign body which is coming into our body then what happen our t cells they will recognize these foreign particles and they will go and they will fight against them there are two major types of the t cells for example helper t cells and we are having the cytotoxic t cells so as the name says that helper t cells okay they will mainly help the other cells of immune system to be activated and if you're talking about the cytotoxic t cells they will directly directly uh, affect or directly go and fight with this antigens and as well as infected cells etc and if you're talking about the severity of disease that can be depend on the strength of these t-cells whenever we are having strong t-cells the severity will be less whenever we are having weak t-cell responses then we will be having severe disease so this is about this topic and now let us try to see yesterday's questions the first question here is british were more successful in india than french because so first one is interference of British in day-to-day -day affairs was very little, yes. 
and british east india company was financially sounder in its trade and it is also most extensive and business methods are very much better yes of course and political system of england was more stable compared to french yes this is also correct so that option will be four all the above and next question is regarding inc ao hume presided over the first session of inc but not ao hume but it is umesh chandra okay so this statement is incorrect we can eliminate this first statement and the president was chosen from the same province he will be not chosen from the same province so because of this bal gangadhar the tilak he mainly was not selected or was not elected as a president okay whenever they want to go for uh, go for uh, sessions in that so and so state okay especially to, mainly they want to they want to prevent this bal gangadhar tilak so because of this they want to conduct the this uh, congress sessions in the in his country especially so this statement is also incorrect the third one is old autocracy people like rajas jamindars wealthy merchants they did not participate in this first session yes of course it is correct so correct option here is 1 3 only and today's questions are the first one it is kuka revolt and next one is raja ram mohan rai and you have to match the following so it is very very simple so try to read this questions and try to give me the correct options in the comment box so now let us try to see hindus today's newspaper pdf uh, before that i want to make a small announcement we in rathod sais we are going to launch this mains answer writing practice course of one year so this course it is very very beneficial so let me explain you what are the specific uh, features so we will be giving you weekly targets so based on that weekly targets daily one question will be given on sunday there will be essay or case study so whatever the answer you are writing essay or case study there will be evaluation and we provide you model answer for essay for your case study and as well as your mains questions and apart from that there will be one to one mentorship as well so in this way this course is helpful to cover your gs1 gs2 gs3 gs4 and each and every topic will be covered in this one year course and we will assure you that you are going to master this correct answer writing skills and apart from that we are also ready with uh, launching of this pen drive courses for foundation course of 2023 so this course it is very very beneficial because we are dealing with each and every topic in your syllabus with a great detail and once you watch those videos then you will be having a clear cut clarity and i can assure you that you can go into write your prelims questions and as well as prelims uh, mains answers without any without any hesitance as well so if you take this foundational course then there will be the prelims test series and as well as mains answer writing course it is free of cost okay So, if you want to talk to me regarding these courses, you can call me on this number eight zero seven four seven six double five one three. Okay, the details of this uh, courses are given in our website, and even if you call me on this number, I will be explaining you about the details. And if you want to watch the videos, demo videos, you can watch those demo videos in our website. Okay, so uh, if you want to get the PDF of this today's class, you can join the Telegram channel. Link is given in description box. So now let us try to see today's PDF. Okay, today's Hindu PDF. So this is today's Hindu newspaper PDF, and the date here is March twenty seven, twenty twenty two, and this is Delhi edition. So I discuss this first topic. It is regarding corner shot weapon, right? And I am saying repeatedly, please don't skip this Sunday's newspaper. This will be providing great insights regarding your science and technology, and even environment and ecology related current affairs. and the second topic it is regarding free ration scheme i discussed about this pradhan mantri garib kalyan anna yojana and here there is one article regarding india stand on russia tied to this chinese challenge so you can go through that article and leave the city paper and if you move towards this state paper okay the state paper so i took this image that is kambala here and i also discussed this article regarding this endosulfan and here there is one article you have to refer that is india urges sri lanka to exercise caution so what happened recently the meeting which mainly held between india and sri lanka in this context india said sri lanka that you need to exercise caution especially to prevent casualties uh, regarding this fisherman issue in tamil nadu right uh, india mainly suggested that uh, we can go for using of this pala military forces rather than compared to that of navy to deal with this fisherman issue and india told sri lanka that relevant uh, clauses of this unclause that is united nation convention of uh, law of sea that should be followed by the friendly nations 
and in this context uh, finally both the countries they agreed to use uh, force that could be justified under circumstances as well and they said that they are going to use some humane uh, treatment for all fishermen and here you can talk about this himalayan himachal apples so this uh, himalayan region is very much suitable for growing of apples so actually what happened so what is the cause of concern here is so apple is one of the important uh, fruit crop that is mainly grown in this hill state and it mainly constitute like 49 percentage 49 percentage of the total area under this food crops out of this we can see 85 percentage of total food production that we can see from himachal pradesh but there is a cause of concern here is increasing of temperature okay so because of this it may have some effect on this crop right and if you see here you can see tribes oppose this narmada link project so you have to refer what is this narmada link project and let me know in comment box and here you can see one article that is india uk may share criminal records so this is a one of the important development i can say regarding india uk relations so india it is deliberately which is mainly saying that we are going to share this uh, criminal records okay between this uk and india and because of that they came up with this signing of memorandum of understanding for the four years and they said that under this mou they are going to share the information that is information exchange and according to this mou which mainly signed in january 2018 so it mainly includes sharing of criminal records information fingerprints and intelligence etc right whenever we are going for this sharing of biometrics of accused or convinced uh, convicted persons so this will have some legal ramifications okay because there is also some issue regarding right to privacy as well for example if you are talking about from indian side we have this crime and criminal tracking network systems that is cctns okay and it is one of the india's online database of fir reports and charge sheets and even investigation reports that can be used okay so this is about this topic and if you see this is the image i took regarding this uh, rhino census in kaziranga national park i discussed that topic and here there is one article regarding this koina project you have to refer what is this koina project on which river uh, we have this project and you have to see the location of this koina project where it is located especially and the next topic it is regarding this olive redly i discussed these two topics and and if you go to this science and technology uh, paper you will be uh, discussed already about this t cell immunity and we discussed about uh, this uh, smoking as well and there is one article i didn't discuss regarding this cold question actually there is one study which is mainly focused on this permafrost impact on the sea floor so this new study which mainly said that because of the thawing of this permafrost that is melting of this permafrost that is mainly having some impact impact on the sea floor they said that that is having some negative impacts on this uh, arctic infrastructure because it is mainly leading to the formation of this deep sink holes okay deep sink holes so because of this it is having some negative impact on the sea floor so this is the thing and apart from that you can refer this article regarding this exports i already discussed this topic you know yesterday's and day before yesterday's lecture so these are the some important articles that appeared in this today's newspaper i hope you enjoyed this lecture please subscribe to rathor's ice academy and don't forget to like share and comment my videos and if you don't like my video so before hitting this dislike button so please let me know your suggestion what you are expecting from our side so by this i'm concluding thank you so much